Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are really excited. We have Zazie here as our special guest and she's known as the Undisturbed Birth Keeper on Instagram. So we have a very special topic today that we're really excited to dive into, especially with us being pregnant for the second time. Zazie, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Um, I'm Zazie Lee and I'm from New Orleans. I, I've been studying holistic health and nutrition and everything I can about the body since I was 18. Um, so I'm really focused on uh, just everything about the body, birth, in, everything in between, death, and reconnecting us to um, our sovereignty. Awesome. Cool. And something else I'd like to mention is that she also follows medical medium protocols, which is really great because um, I know when we were like first pregnant and searching for like, you know, home birth and, you know, how do we want to do this? It was hard to find people that were, you know, in that subject and well, we found nobody really yeah. in that subject and, you know, knows the medical medium information. So this is really awesome because you have that, those tools that you can apply to your practice and with your clients and all that and value that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really interesting that it's such a, um, it's a niche and I've definitely felt the push from the universe um, of like, yes, do this you know, mm -hmm. and especially to help medical medium families, um, because unfortunately, um, the, the more clinical we get with birth, kind of, it, it really takes us away from, like, that spirituality, and, um, it hurts me to see that there's still, you know, fam families out there, because, you know, when you come into medical medium information, I mean, you tend to kind of rewrite your faith a little, I mean, no matter what your faith is, you start to kind of be like, okay, there, I mean, there's, I mean, I would think for most people that there is something new when, you know, that they, um, receive from MM info and they integrate that into mm -hmm. their personal philosophy and spirituality. But then we like come up, come into birth and, um, and then I feel like sometimes like we can segue again and we kind of cut off the spiritual side of it and we go back into this really clinical realm and um and i i really hate that i really dislike it um because <laughs> birth is a very spiritual event you're bringing a soul into this planet um it is our it's the creation of family it's our creation it's how we create a new being um so I, yeah. I'm very, you know, I'm not, I'm not into steering us away from using clinical tools. I do value them and they have their place, but we're overusing and abusing. Yeah. So when you say clinical t tools, what do you mean by that? Um, it can be anything from like cervical checks to ultrasounds to, you know, you lock yourself in a bedroom and you are like, all right, let's have a baby. Maybe, maybe you're not even planning it, but what's the first thing that runs through most people's brains is I got to go get a doctor mm -hmm. and that's setting yourself up for a clinical experience automatically. You know, you're like, got to go get a doctor. Cause that's, that's the norm, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't really trust ourselves. I mean, that's a huge indication to say, without saying it that, well, I can't do this alone. You know, I, I need somebody. And why, why couldn't you, you know, your body is growing this human. Why do you need to go to a doctor? And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a doctor. Certainly we know from medical medium information that we might need some help, you know, and it's good to have someone around for that help but do we have to have cervical checks? Do you, do you need them? Is it necessary? You know, how are right. you feeling? Yeah, when I, so when I first 
found, like, started following you on Instagram, I think it was, like, this past spring, and you were talking about an undisturbed birth, I was just like, it was like, whoa, like, it was this whole new thing that opened up, because here we were thinking, you know, our first pregnancy, we were planning a home birth, and we're like, okay, this is, you know, going to be the natural way, and, you know, this is, you know, it's either hospital or home birth, and, um, little did, did we know that with a home birth, there's like, you know, a difference between like an undisturbed birth and, you know, a home birth, right? So I would love for you to get into, you know, what is an undisturbed birth? Because I was just so fascinated and I was like so excited to talk to you about it because I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, there's just well, yeah. more to it. We had our... To having a better experience. Yeah, we had, you know, we had our midwives picked out, and we thought in our mind everything was just going to go as, as smooth as could be, mm. and it kind of went the opposite way of what we were thinking it was going to go, and we learned things along the way. You know, we learned how to navigate through that hospital environment. If you're in a hospital, these are the things you should avoid. These are the things you, you, you shouldn't allow to be done to your, to your child. And then we learned things about the midwives too. You know, we we kind of thought that the midwives would be there along our side throughout the whole our whole journey. And when she started going into labor, midwives didn't sh show up. And then we found out that they can't even deliver the baby unless it's like 37 weeks. Yeah, right. So, and as you've said before, you know they're working for insurance companies and they have to cover themselves because they're licensed so yeah <laughs> um so yeah what what is an undisturbed birth let's 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 get into that because it's so fascinating it's that creation of family it's not that it's not you just giving birth it's we say we we are giving birth you and then are getting ready to give birth to your second child together and no one should come in between that you know no <laughs> nothing's gonna happen to the baby if whoever your support person is is over here you know like and Ben's not a support person he's your partner he's your husband and it doesn't matter for any couple out there whether you're married or not because in my humble opinion uh, when you're giving birth to a child together, I mean, you're married in the moment. I mean, that, that, you're family, no matter what that looks like. You are family for life. Even if you break up, like, when your child gets married, both of you are going to show up because you're family, you know? And so that creation of family is so sacred, and it's really about honoring, you know, that birth of the soul. The two of you are together. And there's no one there with, like, a Doppler, unless there needs to be, you know, but it's not unnecessary. It's not, it's not, you know, a protocol. If someone is there with the two of you, it's because you asked them to be, you know, but really, whoever the support person is, there's an air of respect, and they're sitting in the corner knitting, or they're making sure the dog's not noisy or just happy, you know. Maybe they're going to get the water or getting some more blankets. They're the service. The husband's not the service. The husband's not over here, you know, on the sidelines watching two other people. It really, part of this is really about integrating the father and, you know, we, it's like midwives and doctors have taken the place of the father. We've really, like, somehow as a society, we have decided we're going to hire someone else to do what dad was supposed to do. Because honestly, I think that dads should be taught how to do cervical checks. I think dads should 
be able to help take blood pressure. And I think mothers should know how to take the father's blood pressure because, you know, <laughs> things happen. And dads tend to, you know, really work hard during a birth and they tend to go without eating and they can get stressed out. And it's good for both of you to to look out for each other, you know, and, and then it's good to have the support person there to really kind of look out for the father, you know, and the mother. But, you know, mom is going to kind of transcend into birth and, she, and she's going to want to be able to feel safe and like she can depart and not have to worry so much on her husband. And dad's going to be so present and using so much nutrition to do that. It's good to have someone to say like, hey, here's here's a smoothie, you know, like make sure you're, yeah. you're staying <laughs> hydrated because birth can be long yes. sometimes. And, yes. and other times it's not. Sometimes it's very straightforward. So it's being undisturbed the two of you are undisturbed and when you're undisturbed with each other there is a spiritual thing that happens there is a there's a portal that opens it's and it's very visceral you know you it's not just metaphysical i mean you can almost you can see it sometimes sometimes you can smell it and if you talk to enough um practitioners in the hospitals or whether, you know, or even home birth practitioners, ask them, what does birth smell like? And they'll tell you, like, oh, it smells like this. Like, I know that smell. Or sometimes, you know, for my teacher, um, Wapio, uh, she's the creator of the Matrona. Uh, and she teaches um, midwifery. And she, her fingers light up and shoot gold out of them is what she says happens to her and it didn't happen right away but it came over time you know and she when she walks up to a house she knows if a woman has transcended deep into the portal to receive her child she knows exactly where that woman is in the stage of her labor just based on that that uh gift that she has wow. interesting so what would you say it smells like uh i I don't necessarily get the same smell as um, some of the other women, but they uh, the common one is that it smells like tang, um, oh, like a tang. Yeah. I not like the, like the drink tang. Yeah, I think so. No. I think that's kind of what they're talking okay. about. It smells like tang. Okay. I think it's one of those smells that you just know it if you smell it. Um, like, and you'd have to kind of like, you know if you're if you're immersed in the situation, you want to walk outside, go get a few breaths of air. And then come back in and you can like really smell it. And some people are really uh-huh. attuned to it. But everyone has a different gift, right, of being able to um, see and feel the metaphysical world. Um, but that's why it's really important to choose your caregiver wisely. Um, your caregiver can really dictate a lot about your birth because the, the portal is very fragile. Um, and it's not weak, but it can be imprinted very easily so if you have someone in the room who is having a negative thought it's going to imprint that space and it's going to be and it can become real you know it can manifest into reality so if you have your mom there and she's not really comfortable with home birth you know that energy you know that the worry the fear like those different energies um they penetrate the circle and it can change the outcome of the birth. It can change sure. how you're feeling, that things like sense. that. So that's what we're talking about when it's undisturbed. We're undis- the That circle is not disturbed. It's kept intact and to the highest degree so that it's the two like of a- you... It's like a, a, a bubble of just this, this, this light energy, right? This like bright yellow light. And then you have someone come into that environment that might be the color red, right? Mm-hmm. And that redness now is changing that yellowness to like an orange color, right? And we want to pull that orange away and just continue that, that bright light color within that circle, right? right. So the idea is is it sounds like is rather than having a midwife there you have someone there but they're there more for support for supporting the husband and the wife 
in this birth that's occurring that is going to be undisturbed. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's like, sounds like your traditional midwife is going to be more like hands on, right? And kind of getting in between the partnership and, mm. you know, not trying to, but might be interrupting the progression of the labor or, you know, the spiritual aspect of what's happening between the two that created the, the baby, right? Right. Definitely. I, I think that midwives really feel, um, and especially a lot of like, you know, you're paying $4,000 for a home birth midwife. And I think that they really feel like it's their job to be where the father should actually be, you know? And I, I don't think that they're very comfortable. I'm not trying to make any enemies here, but I mean, that's just, again, that's in the clinical training where it's like, this is my role. And it's just, it's to sit here and do this and, you know, undo the cord and, you know, help you receive the baby and make sure the baby doesn't drop on the floor. But it's like, honestly, that's a really capable and they're very instinctual. And so are mothers. 